What is going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Now today I've got a very special video for you all. A lot of you may have already seen one of my Entitled Parents movies. We had the first one back in 2019 and Entitled Parents the movie 2020 just a few months ago. But I thought to myself, since we are all in lockdown right now, probably quite bored, how about I make a third part to the series, Entitled Parents the movie Lockdown Edition. So guys, sit back, relax and enjoy this extended episode of my best Entitled Parents stories from the past few months. Also, you you're gonna want to watch the whole thing as there is a very secret message a surprise at some point throughout the video that you're not gonna want to miss entitled dad in missouri thinks quarantine doesn't apply to him exposing several to the virus so for this story the cast is very important rk is a responsible kid who had been studying abroad with ek and ek is an entitled kid who is the responsible kid's younger sister so moving on to the story missouri's first case of covid19 is rk or the responsible kid on march the 5th the family was told to self-quarantine on march the 7th the entitled dad took his entitled kid to daughter and a father-daughter dance at the entitled kids school the family was notified that the responsible kid had tested positive shortly before the dance begun and the entitled dad left the dance with his entitled kid immediately after he found out of the positive test results the entitled dad and his entitled kid have exposed everyone at the school and everyone at the restaurant they had dinner at prior to the dance students faculty and staff who attended the dance have been asked to stay home until further information is available sunday afternoon sam page st louis county executive said the virus patient has been acting responsibly and maturely but her father did not act consistently with the health department's instructions and instead he decided to take his daughter to a school function oh my goodness me what an absolute idiot those two are so let me quickly go over the facts again march 5th the family was told to self-quarantine march 7th they went to dinner and they went to a father-daughter dance at the kids school uh, why okay so by doing this they have exposed everyone at their school to the virus and now they'll have to quarantine the school will be shut down all their families are now in danger it's so stupid i feel like people are underestimating the severity of this virus so far yes it's not the worst thing that could ever happen but it is killing people i feel like this dad and daughter thought oh you know what we're not in danger we'll be fine let's just go and infect everyone else like what is that now for our next story mum blows up at disney cast member gets vip seats to nine Nothing. I was working at the Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular, or Epic as it was known to the cast members, and we had already closed the theatre for the start of a show. When the theatre gets to max capacity, we legally can't put more people in there because of fire code, etc. This woman barrels up to me, gets within six inches of my face, and waves her paper fast pass ticket in my face. She demanded to be allowed into the show, and screams that her child, a little boy no more than six years old, needs to see this show, or his day is ruined she was screaming so loud veins were popping out of the front of her head i stood there calm and collected explaining to her that the theater is full and we can't let anyone else in she pushes past me with one arm holding her child's arm in the other she marches straight for the ropes that block the entrance and tries to hoist her son over the rope but before she gets that far our manager walks up and puts his hand in the air to try to contain the situation he offers to get the kid an ice cream and provide vip seats to the next show if she calms down and comes back later after screaming about how rude I was to her, which I was not, she accepts the token of kindness. My manager turns to me and asks me how long my shift is today. I told him I was off work at 6.30. He nods and he tells the irate woman that he will have me personally escort her to the VIP section down front. He writes her a ticket voucher for the ice cream and seats and she fumed off with not even a thank you. My manager turns to me and apologizes on behalf of her. Then he asks me, how many more shows do we have today? I looked at the clock and realized it was after 5 p.m and well in the middle of our last show of the day. I looked at my manager as a sly smile crept across his face. He had just given an entitled parent a VIP pass to a show that won't happen. The respect I already had for him just skyrocketed through the roof. I was long gone by the time she came back, but I would love to imagine the look on her face when she came back at seven for the last show. Kid got an ice cream and mum got mad. It was a win-win. Oh, this is literally the perfect way to deal with an entitled parent. I love this story so much. Your manager is absolutely awesome. The only problem I can see is that you won't get to see her face when she comes back at 7 p.m. Because you won't be there and there won't be a show. But I guess that's the whole point of it. Anyway, with that being said, let's move on to our third story. 
Kid tried to knock me off and steal my shared e-scooter ride. Racist entitled mother pulled the this is America card to defend him. Man, do I have a story for you. I live near Washington DC, so naturally take all visiting friends and family on a tour of the monuments. The best way to do this, in my opinion at least, is on the city's shared e-scooters. It was a particularly busy weekend and all the scooters with any charge left in them were taken. Me and my visiting friends were waiting by the stairs of the Lincoln Memorial, keeping an eye out for available rides when a group of five people rolled up and parked their scooters. We walked up to them as they were logging off and leaving and asked if we could take them. We were a group of four, so we only needed four scooters. We logged into our skip, which is the scooter app profiles, and linked our payment methods to our respective rides. When Karen, EM, and her son, EK, ran up to the last available scooter and grabbed it, quite defensively, I might add. We thought nothing of it as the entitled kid was about seven or eight and really quite small. So I assumed they would ride on it together. Nope. We were discussing which monument to see next, all standing there with our rides between our legs and connected to our phones. Payments already going through, that means, when the entitled mum asked the entitled kid to go and ask them for one. We figured they probably thought we were stopping, and when the entitled kid came up to my friend group, we told him we had just started our rides. So sorry, hopefully you find one soon. We had to wait 20 minutes to find these. Yes, unnecessary extra words, but we were outgoing, happy, and generally excited to get a move on on our tours. The entitled mum said, Ah! Oh, can't you just share and give us one if you had to wait 20 minutes you surely can't expect a single mother to wait that long right um what i just said sorry there are loads of people around i'm sure you can find another one soon plus we've already linked our credit cards sorry so what you can ask them to refund you i'm sure they have cameras or something just share my son has never ridden one and wants it my friend said no sorry that's not how it works good luck though all of us just said sorry we just share a look and start directing our rides to go in the same direction. We took a few steps and started our scooters, going really slowly in the heavy crowd. All of a sudden, I feel something hit me really hard and knock me off balance, taking me down with my scooter. I'm a loud person, so naturally a little loud scream comes out of me and I hear someone say, oh, shut up. The scooter is still between my legs, but I'm on the floor in a sitting position and look up to see the entitled mum bending over me. Her entitled kid was beside me, also on the floor. My friends run up and say, what the frick? Why would you do that? Are you okay? Is everything okay? What happened? The entitled kid grabbed the handle of my scooter, which was pressed against my stomach, and grabbed my sweater with it too, probably unintentionally. So when I felt him tug, almost ripping my sweater, I slapped his hand away and said, don't, just to have him start crying. A really loud, piercing cry, really kind of weird for a kid of his age. Don't you freaking dare yell at my child, you female dog. How dare you? You come to our country and try to take everything from us you freaking freeloader well this is america and we own that scooter that's my son's scooter you female dog we pay taxes so he can use that scooter uh kind of getting some donald glover vibes from this line right here I should have mentioned, I look very obviously Indian and two out of the three other girls were also South Asian. We do not speak with an accent and have lived in the US for a very long time. My friends and I are stunned and honestly don't understand what's just happened. What? What the frick are you talking about? Did you hit me? My son was running beside you trying to ask you to give him your scooter, you thieving idiot. This is America. You can't do this here. The entitled mum grabs my scooter too. Give it and get out. My friend said very calmly, mom, I suggest you take your hands off her immediately this is assault and we will have you arrested we are literally in a public place and have multiple witnesses stop freaking out now yeah call the cops call them i will have you all deported this is america you are stealing hello you are literally stealing from me i have paid for this service you can take the scooter just let me log off so you can't use my money no it's time you people paid your dues kid pull harder now you will pay you will my other friends literally pushed the entitled mum off me and started yelling at her to back off and we're calling the cops Fortunately, it seemed like someone else already had called them someone from the crowd around us We have no idea who and three officers came up to us after about three or four more minutes of this back and forth With me still on the ground because the entitled mum and her kid would not even give me enough space to get up and untangle my legs Along with my clothes from the scooter They walked up to speak to us and literally told her to calm down. Stop screaming. Shut up up stop screaming more cops show up frisk all of us except the child and finally i'm able to untangle myself 
while she is still mumbling about us freeloading. The cops ask us if we are okay. They ask me if I need medical attention. Did she hit me? Am I in need of any help? Etc. They pulled the groups aside. They separated us from the entitled mum and her entitled kid. Then they listened to me explain, take statements and our contact details, apologize on her behalf in front of her, and immediately ask us to leave if we would like to and tell us that there is nothing more to do here. They held the entitled mum and her entitled kid back and we had no idea what they were doing with them. But two cops walk me and my friends to the end of the park and talk about how crazy she is and tell us that they realized she was inebriated almost immediately. She smelled of booze and we had not realized because of all the excitement. She was drunk, in public, in broad daylight with her child. They said not to worry about it and we went on our way. No one was really hurt, just shook up and I'm so happy it didn't ruin my day with my visiting friends. This story will always go down as the Karen who assaulted us and we laugh about it all the time. I'm absolutely certain we could have taken her if she got violent so we were not really at risk just shocked well guys you never know to be honest one drunk karen could probably just take on the world she's gonna have like limbs flailing everywhere she could be pretty dangerous i just hope that the cops took that kid because you cannot leave a child with an intoxicated adult certainly not one that is inebriated in the middle of the day in public going crazy assaulting people it's great that you can laugh about that story now though because i can imagine that something like that would have shocked you quite a lot right i mean that sort of thing doesn't happen very often a random person just assaulting you in the street but yeah with the racism on top of the assault i think that entitled mum needs to be put away for a long time entitled aunt freaks out when i get a purple cast for my broken arm I broke my arm when I was around 10. Myself and a group of friends had been playing at the swing park and I fell off the climbing frame. The first thing I felt was an immense pain in my arm. It was so bad that I actually felt sick from the pain. My friends understandably freaked out and ran off in search of an adult whilst a couple of them stayed with me in case my arm fell off whilst they were gone. This is a terrifying situation when you're 10. Okay, fair enough. Eventually, my friends came back with one of their dads. He quickly checked my arm over and was around 80% sure that it was broken. He offered to drive me home and would tell me jokes in an attempt to cheer me up. He succeeded in making my friend cringe at his dad jokes and I felt myself relax a little. I was still in immense pain, but I wasn't worried about my arm falling off anymore. Eventually, we got to my house and my friend's dad explained to my mum what happened. He's such a great guy. He even offered to take my mum and I to the hospital. My mum politely declined because the guy had to go to his work and she didn't want him getting into trouble. Once he'd left, my mum asked me all the usual worried parent questions. What happened? Where does it hurt? Do you feel sick? It's She then called my nice aunt to see if she could drop us off at the hospital She was working though and even though she told my mum she was leaving work asap She would still take about an hour and a half to get to our house because of how far away our work is That left only one option entitled aunt brilliant Surprisingly, she did actually seem somewhat worried when my mum told her what happened and she got to our house within 15 minutes My entitled cousin was staying with her dad overnight. So she didn't come with us Heck she even brought me sweets to cheer me up It honestly felt like I was in an episode of the Twilight Zone. Everything is going about as well as it could with my arm in a massive amount of pain. We get to the hospital, give the hospital all the required information, and head to the waiting room for what we expected to be a very long wait. The hospital is hella busy. My mum takes me towards the children's waiting area so I could play with the toys whilst I waited, my entitled aunt following behind. I settled for playing with one of the plastic trucks so that I didn't have to move my broken arm. Everything was fine until a little girl, around six or seven-ish, asked me if i wanted to play kitchens with her which i immediately said yes to she set out some plastic cups for a tea party and we played quite happily until my entitled aunt decides to intervene like the interfering biatch that she is what are you doing sweetheart playing kitchens with sarah i don't know just figured she needed a name (laughs) yeah that's not her actual name i thought you were playing with the trucks why don't you go get one of them they're so cool but me and sarah are playing op little boys don't play kitchens that's for little girls but uncle who is my mum's brother is a cook and he's a boy but he's a insert homophobic slur here you don't want to be one of those do you then my mum got involved look sister he's playing with that little girl leave him alone you really don't think it's weird my mum got pretty impatient at this point no i don't now either leave the little ones alone or you can head home my entitled aunt rolled her eyes at the pet name my mum even now likes using pet names for me she has a lot of anxiety around making 
making sure that I know she loves me and cares about me But she went back to my mum and sat down Sarah and I talked and played for a bit She asked me about my arm and I told her what happened I found out through our talk that she had gotten her ears pierced But the company hadn't cleaned the equipment properly which had led to her right ear getting infected Despite her mother cleaning it thoroughly every day She went on to tell me that she was going to get the earring taken out and once she felt better Her mum would take her to get her ear re-pierced at a different establishment Despite the hassle she was going through at that point in time Sarah was pretty proud of her ear piercings Which in turn made me think about getting my own ears pierced I had run over to my mum to ask about maybe getting my own ears pierced with the money that I had saved up I got pocket money for helping around the house and always like to save it for things that I really wanted or for my mum's birthday and Christmas presents But my entitled aunt scoffed and made faces of disgust as my mum would say she looked like a dog chewing a wasp But she didn't vocalize any of her concerns after about an hour. I was called up to get x-rayed I said my goodbyes to sarah and headed to the x-ray room with my mum. I'm gonna skip all the more boring stuff Basically, I got my arm x-rayed It was definitely broken and we were taken to a little room There are about four beds in the room each with a curtain for privacy where we were to wait for one of the nurses to arrive and sort out a cast for my arm my entitled aunt had been allowed to join us at this point as the hospital only allowed one adult to accompany the child into the x-ray room never really understood why do you not think maybe they saw your entitled aunt complaining so much and saying some pretty homophobic stuff and said yeah only one person allowed in the uh, in the x-ray room with you um not your aunt she was still pretty annoyed about my mum getting impatient with her earlier so obviously she dropped the nice demeanor and pet names and went back to being her typical female dog self and not in a good way She kept her mouth shut for the most part until the nurse decided to ask the question the question that would make the entitled aunt lose her head What color of cast would you like sweetie? My entitled aunt said he likes the blue. It's the same color as his top Is the blue one okay for you? The nurse asked me this with a look that tells me you don't have to go with the color that this psycho wants Well, I like the purple one My entitled aunt just glares at me. Okay, honey, a purple cast it is. What? (laughs) What, you're actually going to give him a purple cast? Well, that's what he wants. Then my mum said, look, entitled aunt, give it a rest. It's a dang color. So? It's purple. Little boys wear blue, not purple. It's not you that has to wear it. Stop being a dang drama queen. You're loving this, aren't you? You want him to be gay. You're encouraging this kind of behavior. Sorry, what? At this point, my mum was looking like she wants to throw hands i want my child to be happy if a purple cast is going to make him happy then he's getting a purple cast little boy shouldn't be wearing purple he's getting the blue one it's almost the same as purple anyway but if blue's the same as purple can't i just have purple yeah i mean surely the entitled aunt just contradicted herself there she's just said it doesn't matter they're so similar so then why does it matter right are you a girl then no but i like purple it should be pretty clear that i'm not a girl (laughs) listen my son isn't your kid and i'm not having you make him feel terrible for liking a certain color at this point the nurse is trying to defuse the situation and i can only look on in shock they argued for a couple of minutes more until the nurse managed to get a hold of a doctor and another nurse who quickly asked the entitled aunt to leave the premises yeah that's a good idea now she did but not without getting the last word in by shouting you're a terrible mother wanting your son to be Uh, Again insert homophobic slur here My mum proceeded to apologize to the doctor and nurses for stooping to the entitled aunt's level They told her it wasn't an issue and that the aunt was out of order with her language My entitled aunt had naturally driven off and left us at the hospital for another half hour until my nice aunt came to pick us up Oh my god, I forgot about that She had stopped off at kfc my favorite fast food place as a kid to get us something to eat and had gotten me a teddy bear at toy shop in town It was bright purple my nice aunt was quick to post a picture of the three of us and the new teddy bear on facebook knowing full well that my entitled aunt would see it just to annoy her a little bit more oh my god i love your nice aunt my entitled aunt actually blocked both my mum and nice aunt on facebook after this incident and we had no contact with her for about two and a half years wow she eventually got in contact with my mum and sent her a massive apology through text and told her how she just wanted to be family again female dog you cut contact with us all we did was enjoy the peace and quiet anyways turns out she was moving house and since she barely has any friends or family that actually like her she was using us to help her move 
because paying someone to help is too expensive when I have family to help me. Also, if anyone is wondering about why my mum let her back in her life, my entitled aunt was a pretty religious person, and my mum just believed that was why she was so against the idea of me being gay. Of course, neither of us believe that all religious people are like that. We have many Christian, Muslim, pagan, etc. friends, and they are all wonderful people. Funnily enough, this is actually something that I've thought a bit about recently. Just because your religion says that being gay is wrong, that doesn't mean that you can then put that opinion onto other people and, you know, hate them because of it, does it? Like, if you believe that yourself, fair enough. Not something I personally believe. I'm not religious, though, so I don't know about that. But you can't then just go to gay people and say, you're wrong because my religion says so. Surely not. To be honest, it's probably not that unlikely that a few of you watching right now subscribe to religions or are part of a religious belief that suggests that that homosexuality is in some way bad. I don't know. If you are one of those people, I'd be interested to know how you kind of portray that to other people in your life that potentially are gay. Do you say that to them to make them feel bad? I hope you don't, but if you just keep it to yourself, maybe it's okay. Needless to say, no one else had any issue with my cast. Some of the kids at school playfully teased me about it, but it wasn't malicious and they were more just more excited to sign my cast. Breaking your arm in school apparently makes you pretty popular when you're 10. Anyways, that was a little story about my psycho aunt. Sorry if it's all over the place or not very well written. I'm hyped up on coffee and attempt to type on my laptop with fake nails. Nah, I thought that was pretty well written to be honest. Very clear, concise and entertaining. Fair play OP, well done. I just don't really understand how someone can be so angry over a colour. Like, <laughs> what effect is that having on your life to make you so angry that someone has chosen a colour that you think they shouldn't have chosen? Why do you care so much? And also, even if for some reason choosing a different colour to the to the norms makes you gay, again, who cares? If someone's gay, that's fine. Leave them be. I also love that the aunt said, what, you don't want him to grow up to be gay, do you? As if you can somehow change someone's sexuality halfway through their life. That's not really how it works. You're born with it. I don't know, man. Maybe it's pretty gay to like the colour purple. I guess it's part of the rainbow and, you know, the rainbow is symbolic of the gay community, so I could be wrong here guys let me know in the comments what do you think single mum at costco so as you all know people are freaking out about the coronavirus so they're doing everything they can to get their hands on supplies to last the quarantine my family decided that we were going to try to go to costco today to get preparations for a couple of weeks of dinners and some other home essentials like most others are doing as we're walking around and picking up the supplies we need i started to notice that the store was basically in chaos people were hoarding items such as toilet paper although costco has limited the amount of rolls a single person can buy at a time there were a few people bickering back and forth about items etc it was kind of funny to see people acting so immature in a time to panic my family and i took our groceries to the checkout line as you do and stood behind some woman and her two children my dad and i started chuckling together about how much of a madhouse the grocery store was when the woman standing in front of us whipped around and started shouting at us to keep your gems to yourself She had a stick up her butt about us being too close to her and her two children and how we were spreading our germs. It was a bit strange, but understandable, I suppose. When the woman in front of us finally got to the checkout counter, she started unpacking a good 10 to 15 packs of toilet paper, as well as her other food groceries to be scanned. As I mentioned earlier, Costco had put a limit of one pack of toilet paper per person, which meant that this woman would have to put all but one pack back where she found them. The cashier mentions this fact to the woman and she replies by saying well i'm a single mum and i need these toilet paper rolls for my family so we don't have to come back out and get sick once the virus spreads more to which the cashier replied i'm sorry mum, but being a single mum doesn't have any impact on the limits so i'm going to have to ask you to please put the excess toilet paper packs back this woman was not having it she had the audacity to start yelling at the cashier about how he should be respecting me because i work my butt off to maintain the peace of my family because my lying cheating husband took all of my money when we divorced while this is all going on the line was getting very long and people were getting impatient so the cashier calmly tells her to either pay and take her groceries not including the toilet paper or to get out of line the woman reluctantly agrees and proceeds to hand the cashier her card before the cashier could complete the transaction the woman asked the cashier if she can have a discount because she's a single mum and can't afford everything she put in her cart now 
Wow, I have been standing in line for a good 20 minutes now and this really got on my nerves. I don't understand why people are so uncooperative, especially about things like this. Yeah, I mean, you do make a good point, OP, but also I don't really understand if she couldn't afford what was there, how was she expecting to get 10 more packs of toilet paper? What? I mean, she's acting like this and she's wondering why her husband left her. <sighs> It's kind of obvious to me. It should be obvious to you, lady. To be fair, I reckon what you should have done to avoid this entire situation is just cough straight at her. See what she would have done. A little bit cruel, but kind of funny at the same time. Anyway, that is our one corona story done for today, I hope. Let's jump into another one. Oh, wait. Entitled mum steals paracetamol out of my trolley. Ah, uh, snap. Here we go again. So, in the midst of a global pandemic, I managed to break my <laughs> Oh, Jesus, what a combination. So they put me in one of those walker boots so I'm not completely one-legged. Me and my partner decided to get some bits from the shop tonight. We certainly weren't panic buying, but did buy some stuff extra so we could double up when we're cooking to freeze. I was leaning on the trolley a lot for support, and my partner was walking back and forth to certain aisles and leaving me to get some bits without making me walk too far. It's quite obvious that I'm wearing the boot as it's the middle of winter, and I'm wearing a dress because I have no trousers that I can comfortably wear with the boot on. I assume this person must be from the southern hemisphere. Obviously with a broken foot I'm in a slight bit of pain and although I've been looking for painkillers most seem to be sold out But I went for a hunt and managed to find two packs left in the shop I didn't notice the entitled mum behind me at first But I carried on limping away when I heard someone clearing their throat a bit too obnoxiously I turned around and smiled at her She looked very typically Karen and she had entitled kids with her around six or seven and one about 10 or 11 years old And she was properly giving me the stink eye um, excuse me, can I have that paracetamol? Oh, I mean, sure, you can have this one. I handed her one pack. And? I'm sorry? I can see you have another pack here. I'm bewildered at this point. Yes? Well, are you not going to give it to me? At this point, I gestured down to my leg. I'm really sorry. I'm in quite a bit of pain with my leg at the moment, and I need the painkillers. Well, that's not my problem. You should have been more careful. I have two kids. I need to make sure they're okay if they get this virus. I mean, I'm sure one pack will do for now if they're okay. I'm sorry, but I'm going to buy these. Oh, I can't believe you won't even help out my kids. I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm going to go. I limped along down the aisle when the older of the entitled kids ran in front of my trolley, stopping me dead. And the younger one went into my trolley and grabbed my packet of paracetamol. Then they both ran off back to the mum. I turned around and she just smirked at me and walked off. My partner came back at this point and I told him what happened. He was just as annoyed as me, but there wasn't much we could do about it at that time. As we went to the checkout, I noticed the entitled mum unpacking her shopping. She didn't notice me and I saw the paracetamol just on the checkout line. So I reached across and grabbed both, hid behind my partner and limped off to another line. I was watching her to see her reaction and as she got to where the paracetamol should be, she looked down, looked on the line and then looked up, utterly confused. That's when she spotted me. I held up the packets and smoked back. We paid and walked out so didn't see the aftermath but it did give me a lot of satisfaction seeing the utter grimace across her face. Awesome. You know what guys? I've said it before and I'll say it again. The best entitled parent stories in my opinion by a mile are the ones where the entitled parent gets justice given to them in the end. Like this ending is perfect right? She took them off you. Well her kids took them off you and then just at the very end you take them from her when she's paying. Perfect. It's also great that you just got to see her reaction just before you left as well she couldn't get to you in time but she knew that you had done it perfect perfect all right i was joking before but that seriously is the last virus story of this video i've got something a little bit more normal for you coming up right now entitled family verbally abused my nine-year-old daughter calling her fat and worthless <laughs> Jesus, I lose it. What a title, man. Okay, so for some background, I'm a father of a nine-year-old girl who's my whole world. Her mother and I split up three months after her birth when I found out she had been cheating. Naturally, I got a DNA test and thankfully she was mine. Problem is, her mother doesn't care about her health. She feeds her whatever she wants and even gives her coffee and donuts for breakfast sometimes. What's wrong with that? Sounds lovely. Anyway, it's a mess. I've called CPA and the police in the past for wellness checks, but it's gotten me nowhere. So, since she was about four, she's had a weight issue. Now, on to today's story that happened about an hour ago. So, my daughter is aware she's overweight. She's teased constantly at school, so I've made it a habit to visit her at least three times a week each week for lunch. As she always asks me to come so she can eat lunch in peace from the bullies. 
This weekend was her weekend with me and she's taken a liking to basketball Which I think is great and she asked me this morning to go to the park down the road in our community to shoot some baskets with her Of course, I say yes and we go when we get there I park and immediately notice two kids entitled kid one and two They're about 13 or 14 years old sitting at one of those park tables cussing and throwing a basketball back and forth at each other I pay them no mind and we walk up to the court that isn't being used I also notice two adults who end up being our entitled parents about mid 30s sitting on a park bench about 30 feet away Smoking and messing around on their phones. We start shooting and she's having fun when I hear it Get the heck off the court you fat idiot We were about to use it and you're too fat to play anyways. Look you can't even make a shot My daughter is nine and still learning mind you. Yeah, maybe go home and use a treadmill They both start laughing now they said this with me right in front of them and i'm annoyed i'm a big guy about six foot one 190 pounds and unlike others i don't like confrontation but i'm not scared to engage if necessary okay first off both of you kids watch your dying mouths and do not insult my daughter again you really think that's okay insulting someone on something so sensitive and you think it's a laughing matter your parents are doing something wrong that's when the parents who were still at the bench hear me and join in on the fun for them at least who the heck do you think you are why are you yelling at my sweet boys yeah you better watch what you say dude your precious boys are standing here insulting my daughter and calling her fat you two really think that's okay to insult a child younger than them over something she's already bullied about at school We're here trying to get some exercise in and play some basketball and just have fun I don't need to deal with you or your little punk boys insulting her The entitled mum looks at me without blinking like what I just said was the specials at a restaurant Yeah, that's probably because she's really used to it. So what's wrong with what they said? Look at her. She's fat, isn't she? They're being honest. She shouldn't be here What the frick? Yeah, they're doing her a favor. She's just embarrassing herself. I mean, look at her. Then they all start laughing. Literally two teens and two adults laughing at my little girl. While she's standing behind me and trying so hard not to cry, I lost my head. All right, listen, you two. I point at the parents. You are freaking trash. So they're being honest and that's okay? All right, fine. Here's some honesty. Your sons are punk bullies and I promise you eventually another kid will stand up for themselves and knock their teeth out i as a normal adult freaking despise bullying you both are trash parents thinking what your kids are doing is acceptable hey watch what you say to my wife and sons your daughter is fat deal with it then my daughter says yeah and you're a mean man and you shouldn't say these things to people she's crying and i'm annoyed and even more upset at this watch what i say or what bud what are you gonna do you and your perfect little family seem to think honesty is all right no matter what form so i'm telling you you're all just bullies and unlike my daughter i'm an adult and i won't put up with any more of your bs especially if any of you say another word to my daughter i swear you'll regret it i was maybe three inches from the father's face when i said this looking back maybe i shouldn't have said you'll regret it but i was annoyed and in protection mode yeah absolutely fair enough the entitled dad just stares at me without moving for about 10 seconds with me not moving either Either. We're not leaving. My daughter just wanted a fun day at the park and I won't tolerate another negative word said against her. Test me if you want. The entitled dad and entitled mum look at each other before finally the entitled mum scoffs. Kids, let's go. We're going home. They begin walking away down the street towards their house. I'm watching them most of the way because I had a feeling they'd say something else. And I was right, sadly. When they're about 100 or so feet down the street, the dad yells. Have fun with your family that daughter punk and they hurry their walk i start running after them i was done and not putting up with this anymore when i hear my daughter say in a calm voice daddy just let them leave now we can play alone she's smiling now and i can tell she's right she just wants to have this all be over with all right sweetie want to play horse yeah you go first and thanks for sticking up for me daddy i'm so sick of bullies always hun and i know don't worry let's just have some fun i'll always be there to help you when i can i give her a hug We had a good time for the next hour shooting hoops and then went home. Thanks for reading guys and don't put up with bullying.
Oh, this story makes me happy and sad at the same time, you know. The way you guys dealt with them, especially you confronting them and saying, you know, you can't bully, and then your daughter saying, you know what, it's okay, let's just play, is amazing. But then the fact that there are people like this that even exist in the world is so terribly sad, isn't it? Like, I kind of feel for the entitled kids. They've been brought up by their entitled parents and not been told that bullying is wrong. What chance do they have? Anyway, OP, you're a good man with a good heart. Keep showing your daughter the right way to go about living your life and how to treat other people. Fair play to you, you're doing the right thing. I just saw a lady get tasered for trying to snatch a woman's face mask to give to her child. I argued with my husband about whether or not to post this because I'm pretty sure this will make the local news and I didn't want to burn this account just yet. But he won rock, paper, scissors, so here we are. Prepare yourself, this story has layers. We were at the dreaded big box store picking up potting soil because we are going to diy ourselves through the isolation things aren't crazy here yet but there is a two per customer limit on a majority of items i assume this means everything so we're getting two bags each of a few different types of soil my husband is loading the last of eight bags on our cart when i hear her i know it's a karen just by the level of unnecessary outrage in her voice are you kidding me not a lot of people out here in the garden center but we all look at her i was almost disappointed to see she didn't come with the requisite a haircut. She actually looked like a frazzled mum, her kid tugging on her hand and an overfull hand basket of groceries. And I had a moment of, girl, I feel you, but dang, she was pointing at us. You can't buy that many. You are hoarding. My husband said, yeah, we can. We're getting two each. Oh, you don't fool me. I know what you're doing. So do I. F off. I'm just sitting there imagining all the ways I'm gonna rock his world tonight. Oh god. Well, Karen huffed at that, spun around, and yanked her kid back inside to go complain to the employee working the register nearby. Now, we already pay for our items. The employee had come out and scanned the bags earlier, and he could easily see our cart from inside. So, being finished, we pushed the cart out of the garden center into the parking lot. And then the automatic doors open behind us, and I hear, now they're stealing. Just great. We load the soil in the car and turn around to bring the cart back and look at plants. By the time we get back, Karen has given up on trying to convince the employee we're the Bonnie and Clyde of dirt and is now trying to negotiate skipping somebody in line. She has a child, you see, and her handbasket, well, it's just so full and heavy. Could she please just scooch right on in here real quick and it'll just be an extra second, she swears. The woman Karen is trying to skip is young, maybe college age, and wearing a face mask. Not a medical mask, but the stretchy kind you You'd wear while riding a motorcycle or when you're skiing. My husband has just informed me it's a neck gator. The mask is black and has like scary wolf teeth on it that honestly made the girl look like somebody you should not F with even though she was wearing a Gap t-shirt and flip-flops. The mask girl is just shaking her head no, and that's all I got as we dropped off the cart. I browse, pick up a couple plants, and we head inside to wait in line. Now it's showtime. Karen and mask girl are near the register facing off, no pun intended. From the looks of things, mask girl finished her purchase and Karen stopped her before she could leave. I don't know if she grabbed her or anything, but Karen was still holding her full hand basket so she hadn't checked out yet. Well, she hadn't paid for her groceries yet, because clearly this woman had checked out but you don't even need it now you're leaving my son could get sick because you won't give it to him and he needs it the mask girl then said heck no you can't have it back off lady but my son really likes it and it's obviously made for boys anyway why would you even want to wear something so scary because i like it and it has my germs on it why would you put a stranger's mask on your kid Uh, why are you being so rude you wouldn't let us go through the checkout first and now you're making my son very upset that's your problem not mine and then the mask girl turns to leave while karen manifests the biggest balls ever and grabs the mask girl by the back of her mask let me make a side note here when all of this is going down we're all just standing in line and watching the register is still going boop 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 as the employee scans items but otherwise we are all just inside this hypnotic bubble but when karen reached out towards mask girl it was like the bubble popped and made everything crystal clear not slow mo or anything but i absolutely felt hyper aware like spider-man karen reaches out people on both sides of me inhale loudly karen grabs the mask and yanks a lady on my right yells and my husband steps forward so getting late tonight jesus mask girl tucks her head down and she turns to karen like an annoyed bull with a bright and shiny new target. I think Karen was going to say something like, don't walk away from me or something, but all she got out was don't and then crack. 
I looked around because the noise was so loud. I figured the roof was about to cave in, but out of the corner of my eye, I see Karen spasm and drop to the floor, writhing. Little Miss Mask Girl had a freaking taser. I don't know when she pulled it out, this tiny little flashlight looking thing, but she laid Karen out with it. And not one of us moved for what felt like forever, like we were frozen. And then it was freaking bedlam. Security guard shows up, more employees show up, Mask Girl is chilling like she's been through this before and knows what comes next. The kid is screaming that the wolf girl killed his mum, even though she's groaning and sobbing on the floor and clearly not dead but maybe wishing she was the people that have been in line with us were all talking at once trying to tell the security guard what happened we hung around just witnessing the insanity for maybe two minutes before karen started choking out demands for an ambulance the police a lawyer the mayor restitution and reparations my husband made eye contact with an employee and got a thumbs up when he put the plants on a shelf and pointed towards the door we got the frick out of there we drove home in silence until my husband parked the car in our driveway and then we just burst out laughing neither of us have ever seen anything like that before we live in a small beach town people are super laid back and mellow karen was anything but and i hope to never see her again (laughs) i just love that this karen thought she could get away with being entitled but no don't mess with someone in a mask they might just have a taser and just lay you out fair play i also love that the mask girl didn't even let karen say a proper sentence like she knew she was so entitled she just had to do something there and then just bang Shut up, Karen. I've I've had enough of you for one day. I'm kind of hoping that the mask girl appears on Reddit somewhere. I don't know where it would be, what sort of subreddit it might be, but just the title, Today I Tasered an Entitled Woman. What a story. Anyway, with that story out of the way, make sure you're subscribed, by the way. I know a lot of you still aren't subscribed, but anyway, let's move on to the second story. Entitled parents try to follow me on a flight and demand to speak to your manager. Backstory. This happened a few years ago. My parents are the epitome of what makes an entitled parent and I've got plenty of stories about their antics. To sum it up quickly, I decided at 18 years old to run away from them and live overseas, where I am today, and I'm quite happy. This was the biggest decision of my life and I was nervous as heck. They had done terrible stuff since my childhood and I needed to get away for my own safety and well-being. Well, sounds like a good decision to me, that is for sure. I planned the flight about two weeks before the date and my parents the whole time didn't think I'd go through with it. To be fair, they only thought I was going on vacation for a short bit. Then came the day and after me calling an uber to take me to the airport they caved to save face and took me themselves i checked in and did all the good stuff before i had to go through security i waved them off and began to walk forward until the following goes down the security guard said to me excuse me where is your boarding pass i only see one here he points at my boarding pass now guys as you've probably deduced from the title of this post these entitled parents were not going anywhere they were following their daughter through security through boarding everything the entitled mum said oh don't worry we're just going to take our daughter to the gate uh no i'm afraid you can't go past this post without a boarding pass what but she's our daughter you can't tell me what i can and can't do with my own daughter the security guy sighs and looks at a flustered me up and down i have a baby face and i've always looked much younger than i really am all right how old is she well she's she's i'm 18 sir my entitled mum glared at me shh Well, she is an adult and does not require accompaniment from her parents. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave. But she does. She's not mentally 18. She's mentally regressed and has issues. I'm shocked and embarrassed by this. I had depression brought on by diagnosed PTSD. Those were my issues, yet she worded it to make it sound like I was intellectually disabled. So I just said, "Uh, what? My entitled dad then said, she's mentally a child. She still likes Chinese cartoons. Now this was in reference to anime and manga. Jesus, I can only imagine how annoying that might be for those of you watching right now that are into that sort of stuff. I don't see how that applies here. She seems capable enough. Do you feel you can go through on your own? Yes, I'm okay. A liar. She begins stomping her foot in frustration like a toddler. Just let me through right now with my daughter. Yeah, and me. The security guard sighs and calls over another security officer. He comes over and says, what seems to be the problem? The entitled mum cuts them off before the first security guard could answer. This jerk won't let me go through the gate with my daughter who is 
mentally. And then R slur. Oh, jeez. I'm sure you can all imagine what that word is. Uh, yeah, can I get the real story, please? The first security guard then explains the deal, and the entitled parents are fuming. They can tell by the looks on their faces they're not going to get their way. Finally, the entitled mum yells out the famously awaited Karen line. I know my rights. I demand to speak to your manager. So another person comes over and the three of them are talking quietly together. I say, mum, dad, this is going too far. I'm going to miss my flight if this keeps going. And whose fault is that? You should have booked a later flight. My flight is at 11 at night. Not my problem. If you miss your flight, that is on you. Finally, they stop talking and approach us. The supervisor says, Hi, I think we can make a compromise. Now, I'm not supposed to do this, but I'll allow one of you three with her to have a meal or just sit with her for a bit. I could really get in trouble for doing this, but I know how far she's going and I know it will be hard. My mom reads her title name on her name tag. I asked for a manager, manager. This is pathetic. Your proposal is also pathetic. How are you going to break up a nice family like that? Guys, I really will be fine. I'll catch up with you next time, okay? The supervisor said, I understand where you're coming from, but OP seems more than capable and is an adult. I am breaking the rules by letting even one of you go through without a ticket, but it is my offer. No, 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 no. This is ridiculous. By now, she is stamping around and waving her arms around. She gets up close to the two security who kind of eye her and she immediately backs away but doesn't stop stamping mom i'm afraid if you don't stop i'm going to have to escort all of you away now i realize he means me too and i quietly mutter an oh crap under my breath and begin to panic a bit fine we'll just take our daughter home then she takes my arm but i quickly pull away stop My dad says, how dare you apologize to your mother? The supervisor then looks at me. Would you like a parent to go with you? Uh, well, no, not really. What? Okay, please come along then. No, I demand you let us on her flight with all the problems you've caused. Yeah, and make it first class or any upgrades. You didn't get the manager. You got a supervisor. You lied to me. Manager, manager. The supervisor ignores them and turns to me. May I double check your tickets yeah of course i show my ticket perfect one boarding pass for one person step this way and enjoy your flight thank you my entitled mum grabs my arm no okay one of us will go through op you like wendy's right let's get wendy's through there i remove my arm no thank you i grab my suitcase and walk through security my entitled parents try to follow and are immediately stopped this is not the service we pay for we should be allowed a ticket on the flight for this wendy's wendy's Come on, Wendy's, Wendy's. I don't look back and now I'm further away. I can no longer hear them over the line of people I am in. I got my flight just fine and arrived in one piece. I cut contact with both of them. Legend has it, my entitled mum is still screaming Wendy's to this day. Wow, that was a pretty crazy story. The good news is that I'm happy now. Your parents, well, clearly, they sound absolutely horrible. I don't really know how you even managed 18 years living with them, but good to hear you're all happy now. Guys, can you just imagine walking away from your parents and them just screaming after you, Wendy's? That's <laughs> so weird. You want me to stop speaking Welsh in Wales? Hi, Reddit. I posted here a while back about an entitled dad making fun of me for stuttering in a coffee shop. This little gem occurred mid last year. Also, there's going to be a lot of hard to pronounce words here. So just in the slim chance Hugo's owner, Bay, covers this, I'm going to include pronunciation tips. So for context, I was born in a country in North Wales called Gwynedd. Sounds like Gwynedd. And as such, I'm part of a tiny minority because I didn't even begin learning English until I was about 11 or 12. I'm 21 now. So naturally, I'm much more comfortable speaking my native language, Welsh. Now, because I wasn't content to be a farmer or a primary school teacher i moved down south and ended up in cardiff where only something like seven percent of people can speak any welsh no problem i'm confident enough speaking english by now i should also preface that i'm autistic and not good with confrontation at all i also stutter a lot when i speak english so i've been working in a coffee shop for a little while now dealing with people and just generally started to get settled in one day i meet a kindred spirit this elderly man who's been coming in regularly more for company than for coffee whenever i see him i get his order ready right 
minutes away and I sit with him when I've got a spare few minutes I say he's a kindred spirit because he's another native Welsh speaker, but speaks very little English I find that a bit odd considering he lives in cardiff, but over the next few days He tells me about his life the old guy tells me how he grew up in Puelis. Sounds like Pool Shelley. Okay, I'm sorry about these pronunciations. Which made me really happy because I'm from Cairnarvon. <laughs> okay, which is just a little ways north. He tells me how he owned a fishing boat and used it to make his living while his wife worked as a teacher. They moved down to Cardiff together into a really big house when his wife finally retired and this went pretty smoothly since she could speak fluent English and had of most things outside. But recently, the old guy's wife died of leukemia, which has made life a lot harder for him. The guy had a fantastic sense of humor and I was happy to sit and keep him company, if only for a little while here and there. I guess it was nice for him to actually be able to have a solid conversation with someone. My manager used to know the guy's wife as both of them came in here a lot before I started working. So he was always sympathetic and made sure to pick up the slack a little bit as a result of me chatting with him. Even though I'm not fantastic at being social, the old guy had a great outlook on life, even for a widower. He always had the most interesting stories to tell, including including one time he recounted how he swam back to shore after his little sailboat capsized in a storm. He always just had this F all of you, I'm my own free guy kind of attitude, which I admired a lot. One day we're gibbering away and an entitled mum comes over with a little boy's hand clutched in hers. Shouldn't you be doing your job? Uh, oh, it's f- f- fine. Don't don't worry. I'm still clearing tables, but my manager asked me to keep an eye on this gentleman. The old guy is confused at this point, barely understanding a word, so I explain to him that she's just asking about something. What? What was that? She's getting really in my face now. Uh, I'm starting to get extremely nervous and I can barely get my words out. What did you say to him? Here you are slacking off. Speak English. So the old guy then says in Welsh, who's she? I explained to the man she's demanding we speak english at this point i'm just kind of stalling talking directly to this woman as i'm not even sure what to say the little kid she's with is looking slightly alarmed at what his mum is doing you're in wales speak english for god's sake not this middle eastern crap uh, excuse me? You heard me. Then her little boy said, Mum, are we getting food yet? Not yet. Mummy's talking. Then the nice old guy said in Welsh, but I don't know any English. This sends the entitled mum into a right half and she looks around the shop appealing to other customers. Sorry, but I don't appreciate lazy foreigners in my country in my coffee shop. Yes, she really said my. What kind of example are you setting for my son? At this point, another customer, who undoubtedly heard the old guy and I having a very animated conversation, calls to her from the other side of the shop and says, Hey, lady, you're in Wales. They're speaking Welsh. You knew that, right? A few other customers start giggling a bit before shaking their heads dismissively and going back to what they were doing. Stay out of it. She snaps at the customer, then turns back to me. Although she's certainly gone a deep shade of red now, she's obviously doubling down oh god here we go at this point i'm kind of just frozen in social anxiety i'm not sure how to turn my mind words into mouth words anymore y- yeah we're in wet go on then let's say something then and it better be in english i look briefly to the old guy who just had this evil malicious compliance like grin on his face the nice old guy said in the thickest welsh accent you can imagine turn around go right now finger your mum, cheeky cat <laughs> Oh my god. Anyone in the immediate vicinity just goes silent and stares. Even I was straight up not expecting that to come out of the guy's mouth. No, neither was I. In a right half, the entitled mum stomps out of the shop, wailing little boy clutched in hand. I look at the old guy who just bursts into a fit of laughter. But how did you know how to- He then cuts me off and goes on to explain to me that his wife taught him to say that because she had this friend who would constantly poke fun at him knowing he wouldn't understand. His wife would nudge him and he'd deliver that line to shut her up. Old guy, even though you're not with us anymore on earth, I will never forget you and your refusal to take anyone's bullcrap. I wish I had you for a granddad. Rest in peace. Oh, well, I wish I had him for a granddad as well. He sounds absolutely awesome. Guys, if you couldn't tell by reading this, it was a little bit confusing. The old guy said that that famous line in English, not in Welsh, which shocked everyone in that coffee shop. Let's talk a little bit about how stupid this woman is, though. I mean, you live in Cardiff. You're in Wales. 
How do you not know what Welsh is, first of all? Fair enough, you don't have to speak it, but at least recognize it as Welsh, not some Middle Eastern crap, as you said in the story. And secondly, surely you should have some respect for people that know Welsh. You probably are Welsh yourself. You should probably know a little bit of Welsh at least. Fundamentally, this story just shows how racist this entitled mum was. I know she didn't know it was Welsh. She thought it was Middle Eastern crap, but there you go. That's still racist. Like if you saw a Chinese person speaking Mandarin, you wouldn't go up to them and say, Oh my god, speak in my language. Nobody says that. Come on. But seriously, OP, you're absolutely right. That malicious compliance in the end, just telling her to go and finger herself. Wow. I mean, it worked, didn't it? Fair play. Oh, sorry. No, I've just checked back. It wasn't finger yourself. It was finger your mum. Let me, let me make sure I get that one right. Now, moving on to our second story. So what? I left you to die. I still deserve your money. Hey guys, I hope everyone is safe at home. Yeah, I hope everyone is safe at home too. Not my story, but I read about it in our local newspaper years ago. It was quite a well-known story at the time. An elderly doctor couple with no children came to know about a newborn baby girl whom someone had left in a waste dump. The baby was about to die. They took her to the hospital and then formally adopted her. Years later, the girl herself became a doctor and earned good money. An old poor couple came to the girl claiming to be her biological parents and demanded that she give them money as they didn't have any means to provide for themselves. The girl didn't believe them, but after DNA tests, it was proven that they were indeed her biological parents. How they knew that wasn't mentioned in the article. The couple kept demanding money from her saying as she was their daughter, it was her responsibility to look after them in their old age. When the girl asked them why they left her to die, they tried to justify their actions and said that if they hadn't left her there, she wouldn't have so much money right now. It was because of them she had money and so they deserved some of it. What? They wanted money as their other kids, sons mostly, either didn't earn or didn't want to take care of them. I'm not surprised. When the girl refused, they threatened to go to court against her. In retaliation, she sued them for abandonment and a few other charges. There was no follow-up article, so I don't know what happened to the girl or those pathetic excuse for human beings. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I think I can pretty much tell what probably happened after this. The girl just went on with her normal life, earning money, being a doctor, being a good person in general, and the parents probably just died a very sad and long and painful death. That's what I hope happened anyway. Let me just get this straight right. So they left her to die when she was a baby in a dump and then they want money back from her because she's now earning a lot of money. That's just ludicrous. And also just because you can't look after yourself well enough, you can't earn enough money in your old age, whatever, you haven't saved well enough, doesn't mean other people owe you it. Oh, honestly, this might be the entitled couple that I hate the most that I've ever met on this subreddit. Just, just horrible. What a horrible thing to do. Now moving on to our last story. Now this one is a little bit different. It has a few pictures involved. The entitled female dog put Puts this note on my husband's windshield. We are parked in a handicapped spot. I have a permanent placard because I use a wheelchair. Now guys, here is said no. Oh, even look at the painting. Look at the flowers. <laughs> it just screams entitled. Anyway, let's read this out. Here we go. I am a single mother and it's really difficult carrying my babies and groceries up to my apartment when I can't park in the loading and unloading zone. It keeps happening. Guys, notice how this is underlined. I'm sorry to say something. I just wanted you to be aware. Thank you. Smiley face XOXO. What a lovely note that is. I would love to see that on my car. Right, so in response to this, here is some context. We've had to park the car slightly in the handicap loading zone because people like this female dog keep parking their cars in it for hours. And then I can't get my wheelchair into my car. I'm an end stage liver failure. But this poor single mum with groceries though needs that spot, of course. Update, this was the response that was on my vehicle this morning. Okay, let's have a look at this. The handicap parking is marked for you and your use. The loading slash unloading zone is also marked for everyone's use. I love how they've put a smiley face and also underlined everyone's. This is so passive aggressive. If you need clarification, go talk to the office manager. Oh my. Look at the exclamation mark. Sorry, exclamation mark. Let me, let me make sure I pronounce that correctly as they have gone through the effort of putting a heart below... <laughs> It's, it's just so entitled. I love it. Trying to be as nice as possible, but but just just look. They've drawn a, they've drawn a, an entire diagram. All right, so we have the handicap spot, which is your spot, and then everyone else's spot for temporary use. Yes, temporary, the key word here, not hours and hours. Anyway, I took the letters over to the apartment manager, and we are now colluding to have this woman's car towed. So I have moved my car. The apartment manager is sending out a warning to everyone in our building to not park in the access zone, and when she does, 
does, she will be towed. I guess she should have checked with the property management. Oh, got him. I mean, come on. How do people not understand that being handicapped itself is hard enough, let alone having horrible neighbors like this that, that drum it into you every day that you're doing something wrong when really you're not? I mean, come on. Oh my god, guys. I've just seen that OP actually left a note to the entitled mum. Let's get into this. To the single mum, underlined, who left a message on my car. <laughs> Oh, I love the heart as well. Just so good. What a response so far. I'm so sorry that life is difficult for you right now and that you've been having trouble because you haven't been able to park in the handicapped loading zone. Yes, underline that as much as you can. I know carrying groceries and kids is hard. You see, I park in the middle sometimes because you and others decide to park in this loading zone, making it impossible for me to use my wheelchair when I have to. You see, I'm in end stage liver failure and have heart problems problems and I'm waiting for a liver transplant. <laughs> so I will move my car, but being as sick as I am, I'm home all day. If you park here without a handicap placard, I will call to have your car towed. Then it will be very difficult to get your groceries home. <laughs> I love the XOXO as well. So good. So good from UOP. Fair play to you. Oh, what an amazing way to get back at her. I guess people just don't understand that disabled people have it a lot worse than able-bodied people. You're in end-stage liver failure and you're getting this crap for your next-door neighbor. Can it get any worse? Anyway, OP, fair play to putting up with this horrible female dog and going about this the right way and not getting too angry. That must have been very difficult. Also, I love that your manager had your back. I mean, it makes sense. A normal person would have your back but yeah going against this entitled mum that must be pretty difficult entitled mum calls police on my daughter for not playing with her daughter this is my first time posting i will try to keep the story short and to the point but there does have to be some backstory for context here we go this happened about 12 years ago i had just moved to a small town my 10 year old daughter made friends with a girl down the block the girl didn't have many friends because her mum was drama and nobody in the neighborhood wanted to deal with her i didn't want to punish the entitled mum daughter for her mum's behavior and our daughters were thick as thieves in no time about six months later my daughter comes home from their house crying apparently over an argument over who got to play with what barbie the other girl called my daughter an n-word oh wow when my daughter became quite visibly upset the girl told my daughter something to the effect of it's not a bad thing it's just what my mum says you and your mum are when you act like you are better than us just stop acting better and you won't be an n-word wow the entitled mum called pretty quickly to apologize for her daughter talking out of turn and sharing personal family conversations i explained to her that i was okay with the girls still being friends as long as the four of us could have a sit down and just kind of talk through why that word would be so hurtful to my kid she agreed but made comments that made me feel she thought i was overreacting at the end of our conversation i made it very clear our daughters would not be around each other until the sit down happened the entitled mum snaps this is what's wrong with you people always playing the race card and making a mountain out of a molehill you aren't going to punish my daughter because you can't get over yourself i hung up and that was the end or so i thought one month later my daughter is at the park down the street from our house with the neighbor and her kids i'm cleaning my house when i get a phone call from the neighbor the neighbor said oh my god the entitled mum is here she is screaming that the kids can't ignore her kid at a public place by law they have to play with her daughter i'm packing up and coming back just letting you know this female dog is acting nuts do you need me to come no i'm ignoring her we will be home in a sec two minutes later i get another call and can hear screaming in the background it was the neighbor again you won't freaking believe this she called the police on your daughter the cops are here you need to get down here i arrive and my daughter is shaking and crying thinking she has done something wrong the entitled mum is screaming like a mad woman at the top of her lungs about how my daughter being in a public place means she has to play with her daughter so what are you going to do about this are you seriously just going to let this girl stay at the park when she is refusing to play with my daughter Daughter? The police officer said, Mom, I'm sorry, but as I was saying, there is no law that kids have to play with each other in public parks. If she doesn't want to play with your daughter, she doesn't have to. The entitled mum grabs at the walkie talkie thing on the cop's shoulder. I want to speak to your sergeant or commanding officer or whatever. Someone needs to come do their freaking job. The officer called his commanding officer. I was stunned. I asked if my daughter could sit in my car as she was visibly shaken. He said she could, which of course sent the entitled 
entitled mum on another rant. The commanding officer pulls up as she is screaming about how my daughter needs to get out the car and play with her child. What, right there and then? The commanding officer comes over and the officer is trying to explain to him what's going on as she is screaming a foot away. He comes over to me and I tell him the backstory on how this all started. Then he says to me, at this point, I don't see a reason for you to have to still be here. You can take your daughter home. The entitled mum then turns bright red. This is why they are like this. Nobody holds them accountable for anything they do. She should at least get a ticket or something. I don't know what was said after all of that. Me, the neighbor and our kids got out of there quick. I did start looking for an apartment right away and found something about two months later. While I was packing, I got a call from the entitled mum. I let it go to voicemail. I hear you're moving. I just wanted you to know if you or any of your kids walk by my house before then, I'm calling the police for harassment. I don't even care if it's James, my son that was two at the time. And I can't wait to hear what stupid rubbish you have to say about this when you call me back. I'm not gonna lie. I was tempted to call back, but didn't. We moved a week later, thankfully. All right, clearly this entitled mum is just insane. This story is pretty funny, but I'm not gonna lie. It is also quite sad. The fact that you had to move out of your neighborhood OP just because of this one racist, horrible neighbor is just a travesty. If it were me, I would have tried to catch her saying something racist and then recorded it. That is illegal. You can't do that. What I'm saying is I don't think that you should have had to leave your neighborhood just because one of your neighbors was openly racist towards you. That's not how society should work. Fair enough. Maybe you had no other option, but I don't know. You should have stuck around for a bit and tried to get some real justice, in my opinion. Guys, let me know down below. What would you have done in this situation? Mm, I don't know. It's a tough one. Anyway, with that, let's move on to our next story. Entitled mum says, I don't need a car, even though I'm an essential worker, then tries to steal it. Hey again, guys. I'm sorry if this seems like a long rant, but I'm so furious right now. I need to get this off my chest. A little backstory. Right now, I'm a student in college pursuing a degree in child developmental psychotherapy. This semester, I got an internship at a local mental hospital so I could get experience and make it easier for me to get into grad school later on. The hospital I work at isn't just a facility for short-term patients though. Some of the people who live there are permanent residents, ranging in age from 6 to 78. For various reasons, but I won't name specifics, out of respect for our residents' privacy. Basically, our goal is to do everything possible to help people recover from a mental illness slash episode and to provide a comfortable quality of life for our permanent residents. Needless to say, I deeply enjoyed my internship there. After the initial COVID-19 outbreak, all internships within the hospital were suspended until further notice. So I stopped going for a good three weeks and tried to focus on school. Then one of my old bosses called me in tears, filling me in on the current state of the hospital. There have been three positive cases of COVID-19, out of which two had passed away. 12 employees had quit or simply not come into work at all anymore. And to top it all off, there was a surge in people admitting themselves or others to the facility. A good chunk of people admitted were children whose parents claimed they had some form of mental defect, although I suspect that they simply didn't know what to do with them. Once she had finally told me about the situation, I immediately begged her to put me on the next work schedule. She agreed and I've been working there ever since. Wow, what a good person you are. Now, I don't want to come across as arrogant or pretending to be a martyr or anything like that. In all honesty, I think I am very underqualified compared to someone with actual medical experience and or training. But all I know is that these people people at this hospital are dependent on us for care, support, love, and help. And I will be god danged if I just sit by and watch bad things happen to these people. Simple as that. Sorry for the long backstory, on to the actual story. Well, I'm sure it was relevant. Now, ever since I started working at the hospital, my hours have been absolutely insane. There have been times where I've spent 48 to 50 hours straight at the building. Wow. I eat when I can, I sleep at three hour intervals so I can get up in the middle of the night and check on our residents and patients. I do my virtual lectures and homework while organizing patient files. As awful and maybe selfish as this sounds, I do try to get on my switch around midnight and take care of my Animal Crossing town. I'm weak. Basically, I'm lucky if I'm able to spend 30 hours at my home. That's where our entitled mother, EM, comes into the picture. If you've read the edit on my last entitled mum post, yes, it is the same woman. You already know this. But if you didn't, basically, she got arrested for drug possession and subsequently lost custody of her son. Ever since, she has been absolutely desperate to get custody of him again. So, she has been scrambling between family members, trying to acquire things that make her look like a responsible parent. Baby gates, child safety locks, a new fridge, a new bed, countless new toys. I could go on and on. 
one. However, she went to her dad, my stepdad, for the most expensive thing she needed, a car. My stepdad refused because he was recently laid off because of the pandemic and we can't really afford to be buying something so expensive and not even be able to use it. I've been giving a portion of my paychecks to my parents to help ease the burden. It's not much in the grand scheme of things, but it's enough. I don't think we're in trouble financially, but if worse came to worse, I would start giving 100% of my paycheck to them. After this conversation, the entitled mum drove to our house. Yes, drove. She had a car. She then tried to plead her case with my stepdad again. I was sleeping in my room at this point, but my stepdad told me about the conversation and it basically went like this. Dad, please. I wouldn't be asking if it wasn't important. You already have a car though. Yeah, but it's not an awesome car. I need one with heated seats and built-in GPS. I don't think a judge would really care what kind of car you have as long as it's a car. You are so selfish. I need this so I can get my son back and you aren't even willing to help. How could you let my baby be taken away without helping me get him back? Don't you think your grandson deserves something nice after what he's been through? I can't afford it. I'm sorry. Even if I wanted to, I can't do anything. Then let me have OP's car. Uh, OP needs that car to go to work. She's an essential worker. That's debatable. Making sure some psycho doesn't off themselves isn't really essential. I bet she doesn't even do anything anyways. She's probably just lying about the job so she can go get high or F some dude. Dad, I'm your daughter. She is nothing but some half-breed. I'm mixed race. And a female dog. Just give me the car. The answer is no. Get out. Figure this out for yourself. I'm not helping you. I thought the situation was over after that conversation. Nope. I don't know how she did it, but the entitled mum got my work's address and went there while I was working. I was on hour five of an 18 hour shift when my boss took me aside and told me that my car had been vandalized and she had called the police. When I went to look outside, I saw the entitled mum handcuffed and arguing with a police officer in front of my car. Apparently, she had tried to steal my car by breaking the driver's side window and attempting to hotwire my car. When she couldn't hotwire it, she got out, broke one of my taillights, then keyed a word that I morally refused to even and type on my driver's side door. As pathetic as this sounds, I started sobbing as soon as I saw the damage. Maybe it was the lack of sleep catching up to me. Maybe it was the shock. All I know is that I was gross crying in front of my boss, EM, and the police. The entitled mum was yelling things at me, but I couldn't tell you what they were if I tried. I just went into autopilot. I gave my statement to the police, confirmed that I wanted to press charges, called a tow for my poor car, and took an Uber home. I honestly hope that was the end of her BS for at least a while, because I don't think I can handle any more of her. Everything right now. I fixed my car as much as I could on my budget. I had an extra tail light, so I put it in. I put a trash bag over the broken window and used duct tape to cover up the word she keyed into my door. Sure, it looks super ugly, but it still runs. I'm just thankful that she didn't cut anything important. The ironic thing is, my stepdad's family is talking about pooling money together so they can get me a new car. When my stepdad asked me if I had any preferences, I told him I wanted heated seats and a built-in GPS. Oh, sweet karma. Bell hasn't been set yet on the entitled mum, but all I know is that after this, she is not getting her son back. I'm happy for that, though. That boy deserves so much more than she could give, and maybe now he will get her. Thanks for listening to my rant, you guys. Stay safe out there. Oh, man, what an incredible story. Honestly, the work that people in healthcare are doing right now just goes so under the radar, even though we are now finally appreciating it. Still, what they are doing is just incredible. To have an entitled person like that ruin an and disregard all the good stuff you are doing. It's just so mental to me. Why can't they just be appreciative of what you're doing that is so, so good? Honestly, now, without being disrespectful to people that actually do need the care, I think that this mum should be in a psycho or a mental hospital. Ah, oh, come on. Now, guys, we've come to the secret part of the video, the surprise message. This one is a tough one, and Amazon voucher is up for grabs, but I'm gonna make this challenge very difficult. To be in with a chance of winning this voucher, all you have to do, I say all, oh, this is gonna be very hard, is comment how many times Times I say the word entitled throughout this entire movie. Yep, that's a tough one. Guys, leave your comments down below. I've made this as hard as possible so as few of you can get it as possible. So if you put the work in, you've got a great, great chance. Anyway, with that being said, let's get back into the movie. Entitled Mum tells me to turn off my gaming PC because it's making her son jealous. Long story short, I moved into a new place recently with two stories and it's very nice and modern. The day me and my family got to the new house, we moved all of our furniture in and my gaming PC, then met the neighbours. This is when we met the 
entitled mum. She also mentioned she had an eight-year-old son, entitled kid. Our house didn't have blinds and we never had a chance to install them. My bedroom just happens to face the entitled kid's room next door, which has no blinds. I set my gaming PC up on my desk, which faced towards the entitled kid's window. The second day of living in the house, the entitled mum knocks on our front door. She then says to my mum, can I speak to your son? When I get to the door, the entitled mum is there and gives me a dirty look. Can you turn your computer off? It's making my son jealous. Also, he was watching you play your games on your computer at 11 p.m. last night. I'm really sorry. We have ordered blinds online to install, but it's going to take time. But it's making him jealous in the day. Knock it off. Why are you being so rude? It's my room and my computer. Oh, don't you play the victim. You're disturbing my family. I make barely any noise and I have headphones. What? It's your son who was watching me from his window and yelling last night. I'll have the police know about your trespassing light into our property. (laughs) Wait, what? Go ahead. I slammed the door. She didn't come back. Trespassing light. Are you joking? That's. I've never heard anything like that before. That's got to be an upvote from me. What? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> How can light be just so stupid, man? Imagine just moving into your new neighborhood. Oh, you've got this lovely, nice modern flat. Then you meet your neighbors. Oh god, I regret everything I've done. Hey, you know, I don't think it's that bad that that kid was jealous of your gaming PC. I mean, my gaming PC is about five, six years old. I need a new one. I'm a little bit jealous. But his mum then saying that the light is trespassing? (laughs) What? What is that? With that crazy story out of the way, let's move on to our second one. My son wants a go in your electronic wheelchair. Get out so he can have a go. Oh god, it gets better and better. I've been browsing this sub for a while and never thought I would post on here. Oh, how I was wrong. Backstory, I'm a 29 year old female and have been confined to a wheelchair since I was 17 I'm a quadriplegic and can use a manual wheelchair at home But use a power wheelchair in public for practical reasons I've mostly full use of my upper body and partial use of my lower body I've been mistaken for a paraplegic a few times This happened about a month ago before the poop hit the fan with COVID-19 in my town I was downtown shopping for supplies for my inevitable self-isolation When I heard a deafening squeal of a child about 12 years old Of course it was an entire kid oh that's a cool scooter how fast does it go yeah thanks little man yeah it goes pretty fast can i have a go at this point i think that he means to sit on my lap and i drive him around which in any other scenario i would have been happy to do but you know covid19 and all sorry dude but not today the kid says oh okay and stomps away and i thought that was the end of it but you know i wouldn't be here if it was a few minutes later i hear the ground start to tremble as the megatron karen approaches approaches oh boy i thought this is gonna be fun excuse me what did you say to my son i'm a bit confused here uh he wanted a ride in my wheelchair i said no what did you just say to me you need to respect your elders and not talk down to my poor little angel you don't even need that wheelchair i know your legs work oh my god you're just faking it to get attention now let my son have a ride what am i reading she wouldn't have been much older than 35 so obviously not my elders But even if my nan spoke to me like that, I wouldn't reply kindly. Yeah, fair point So at this point all of my patience has officially gone My wheelchair costs more than your car and you want me to miraculously heal out of my chair So your dirty crotch goblin can take a joyride Okay, also the crotch goblin was smirking at me the entire time. Of course he was now Here's where the story gets graphic I have hypermobility, which makes my joints extremely flexible and dislocation easy and relatively painless. I also have titanium screws inside my neck that creak loudly when I move a certain way. Bring on the Frankenstein, wow. I leaned forward, pushed down with my right arm, dislocating my shoulder blade with a loud pop as I twisted my neck to make it creak. Then push down with my left hand to contort my arm and hand in an unnatural position. Just why? This all happened in a few seconds, but it was enough to make Karen, red-faced and horrified, scream out. Stop! It's okay! Kid, let's go! And they hurried out of the store. Okay, now I get why you did that. I could hear laughter coming from behind me as a friend who works there walked up to me and said that was mean. He knew me well and had seen me pull that trick before. Needless to say, I never had an issue like that again. It's a small town and news travel fast don't mess with the girl in the wheelchair wow fair play op i reckon you took that so much better than 99 percent of the population would have done in your situation wow you handled this like an absolute pro which makes me a little bit sad to be honest because it suggests that you get this situation happening to you more often
often than not. I feel like the majority of people do have a lot of respect for disabled people and understand their troubles. I just don't understand why there's this small minority that just don't get it. How old is this kid again? I'm gonna say, yeah, 12 years old. Fair play, he probably doesn't really know what a disabled person is at that age or understand that the, the full disability that, that you probably have. For that reason, I reckon it's okay that he asked to have a go. He probably just doesn't understand how serious your condition is. But then when the mother backs him up, yeah, that's just so wrong. With that story done, let's move on to our third and final one for this video. Entitled mum says my seven-year-old isn't allowed to mourn her grandfather anymore. Ruined seventh birthday. My dad died on the winter solstice 2016. We're pagan and celebrate Yule instead of Christmas. It was a very sudden heart attack in his sleep, though I'm not convinced he didn't purposefully overdose and cause it himself. My oldest was six at the time and my dad was her best friend. It hit us all very hard and I was struggling to help my daughter through her first real loss while mourning myself. My mum decided to self-medicate with crack and whiskey, ironically what my father used to overdose. She kept making promises to my daughter about spending time together. Being six, she was suddenly terrified that she would lose my mum too and then bailing last minute. Always to go to a party or hang out at the bar. She said this was her grieving. I said it was her spiraling, but she refused to seek help. Mental stability was not a priority in that household ever. Here's where the entitlement comes into play. Less than two months after his death, my mum starts dating a new man. By February, she told my six-year-old that grandma had a new man friend. She didn't tell me. I got to hear about it through my six-year-old's tears. She felt like grandma was replacing Pop Pop. Even if that isn't the case, the relationship was new and the kid was still grieving. She didn't need to know about grandma's new relationship yet, but my mum disagreed. She said, she has the right to tell her granddaughter whatever she wanted. I mean, yeah, fair enough, but not before you. We got into heated arguments after arguments about boundaries and my daughter's right to mourn. My mother said, you need to support me on this. I informed her like she did when I came out of the closet that no, I don't have to support you, but I do have to accept you. She accused me of demanding she break up with her boyfriend because a child threw a tantrum. I told her she was welcome to live her life, but she didn't need to involve my daughter in every aspect of it. A few months went by of my mother constantly trying to force her new boyfriend into my daughter's life. She would ask to take my daughter somewhere to spend time together. I would ask if her boyfriend would be joining them. I had to turn her down several times after asking my daughter if she was comfortable enough to get to know him. She was not. Each time my mother would scream at me about ruining her life and impeding on her grief. She was in mourning. How could I treat her this way? I love that little face on the end as well. My daughter's seventh birthday rolls around and we get ready for a family party held in our backyard. I specifically told my mum that she was invited, but her boyfriend was not. This is a seven-year-old's party. The birthday girl made the guest list and it is no place for drama. Well, guess what she does? Not only does my mother bring her new boyfriend. Oh no, it turns out the poor guy had just had a stroke or something and needed assistance walking. He temporarily needed a walker and the party was through the grass of the backyard. My mother left her date to fend for himself at the side of the road and strode into the party area with a look of absolute triumph that didn't make sense at first. Then I saw him come around the corner, a man I didn't recognize and could only be one person. On either side of him were my in-laws holding his arms to help him along the grass. They didn't know him either, but they saw him struggling in the front yard and decided to help him make it to the backyard. The moment my daughter saw him, she started to sob. Seeing just my mum without my dad was hard on her enough at the moment, but seeing another man in the place where Pop Pop is supposed to be it broke her she ran inside to her room and before i could get someone to cover the grill for me my mum chased after her i found them in her room my daughter trying to pull away from my mum and my mum hugging her tight and muttering in her ear something inside me just snapped i knew that position well she was being told she is a selfish child for having emotions i jerked my mum away from my child and pulled her into the other room where the yelling began My mum said, she needs to learn to get over this. She's seven mother. This is hard for her. You're being so mean to me. I just lost my husband. And she just lost her grandfather. We're all hurting mum. I told you he wasn't welcome. She wasn't ready to see him. Well, he's already here. So there's nothing she can do but get over it. You need to leave. But you can't kick me out. This is my house. Now leave. 
She didn't go quietly. Everyone at that party knew she was thrown out by my own daughter. I'm just here to celebrate with my grandchild. When she was finally gone, I hugged my still sobbing seven-year-old and asked her what grandma said exactly. She said I can't be sad anymore because he was just my grandpa, but he was her husband. So I can't be sadder than grandma. My stomach churned and I was suddenly very sorry I didn't pop my mother across the face before she left. Oh my goodness, what a contrast to the first two stories. This one was just sad. I'm so, you know, I'm kind of sorry I brought it to you guys, but this is what this entitled parent subreddit is all about, I guess. Look, I get it. You've moved on faster than both your daughter and her daughter. Fine, but that doesn't mean you ruin your daughter and your granddaughter's lives. Let them mourn for their grandfather, their father. What? That's the first point. And then to ruin their birthday, a seven-year-old's birthday as well? That, that's just literally the devil's work right there. OP does actually say afterwards they did go into no contact with the grandmother for a year after that. Yeah, that's what you got to do in this situation. What a horrible person. I just feel so bad for the granddaughter, you know. Seven years old and told you're not allowed to mourn for your grandfather because I was his wife. Who cares? Doesn't change anything. Let her mourn. Entitled mother yells at me for infecting her family with Corona music. Let me introduce you to a new Karen, the Indian Karen. A little longer hair tied into a ponytail and rolled into a bun that serves the function of hiding all of the seven deadly sins. A voice shrill enough to make all the street cows turn their head to look at their mistress. A gold necklace to announce her dreaded arrival, one that I encountered. I don't know if anyone has read this article, but basically it tells how some scientists converted coronavirus's famous spike protein into music. I have no idea if it's legit. I thought if it's true, it's coolest song was able to do it and i thought i should share it so i did to karen's son a good person a good friend of mine he is happy that smart people are left in the world the next morning my mum calls me from the other room and i pick up this was the conversation in punjabi this is a rough translation hi ma you d sucker sister effer son of a female dog how dare you infect my family at this point i had just woken up and i'm still in the weird half sleep phase i'm wondering which sister i never had that she was talking about then my mum says shut up karen don't you dare speak to my son like that i'll speak shut up or i'm hanging up what is going on who are you my mum says i have mrs karen on conference did you give her son coronavirus what no don't you lie i have seen the music you send my son it's coronavirus it took me a full minute to realize what she was talking about and then it hit me have you even read the article don't talk back to your elders then my mum said you're acting pretty elderly now those two argued for 15 plus minutes they started yelling at each other about other things like i'm a bad influence karen doesn't know how to talk to anyone stuff like that it's a translation of what a scientist at mit i put the phone on speaker opened the article and started reading all the technical terms which her fifth dropout butt would not understand you are not making any sense you're lying she then says to my mum, you told him to lie what kind of mother are you this finally breaks me apparently better than you did my friend show this to you or did you open his phone without him knowing again that is none of your business i I cut the call and immediately call my friend. I tell him everything. He's mad. This was the sixth time this month she has gone through his phone. Her excuse being, I don't want any local harlot to corrupt his son. It is her duty to make his son marry a proper seat girl without any distraction. Okay, so according to this entitled parent's logic, apparently sound or music can, can transfer a virus. I've never heard that before, but I mean, imagine if that was actually true. That would be scary. Corona music, does it sound good? I haven't listened to it perfectly. You know what? I'm going to link the article below. You guys can go and listen to the music. Let me know. Does it sound good? Sorry, I just can't really get over that, over that logic that music can cause coronavirus. <laughs> just so stupid. Imagine if, say, like death metal virus was a thing. You listen to one death metal track and suddenly you get the death metal virus. It's that sort of stupid logic. What is this? Moving on to our next story. Karen is confused for getting the police called on her because she broke into my house after I went on holiday. Backstory. This happened in 2015 and still makes me wonder how dumb people are i was on holiday with my mum and dad in spain for a week to make sure our house stayed well maintained we would give two to three copies of our house key to our neighbors and told them to make sure nothing was taken one of them was karen who was the only person in her family who was entitled so the story so my family was back from our holiday and by the time we got back we were so tired we left the luggage in the hall and went straight to our rooms to sleep 
It was about three hours later when we heard something like glass break in our living room If you have read my other stories, then you would know I play airsoft So I had a pistol with me I took it with it loaded with bbs airsoft bullets or pellets and went downstairs with my dad who was looking for his airsoft rifle But it wasn't in its case. So he followed me down I walked into the room and I see karen trying to rip the tv off the wall in the process She knocked over a glass vase which made a loud crack that went through the house the conversation went like this What the F do you think you're doing? Borrowing your TV? What does it look like? My dad then said, No, you are trespassing. Get off my property now. You gave me a key, so I have a right to take all your stuff, as having a key means I own this house, so go away. Oh my goodness, surely some of the worst logic you've ever heard there. At this point, Karen notices the gun and goes white. I take advantage and say, go over to the kitchen. Next to my kitchen is a small bathroom, so as soon as she is near it, my dad pushes her in and locked the door. Afterwards, he called the police. About 20 minutes later, they arrived, and when Karen heard them, she started screaming through the bathroom door saying that we kidnapped her and how we refused to let her go I told the police what happened and offered to show them camera footage as we have cameras all around the house They took the footage and took karen into custody until they looked over the footage to sum this all up Karen was stealing from us the whole week with stuff like radios and phones We pressed charges and she got 18 months in jail for robberies and trespassing Yep, that sounds like a good amount of karma was served to her Why does she think that being given a key means that she now owns the property? and can steal i know she says borrow but let's be honest steal the things that are inside that house so so weird you know every day i log on to reddit and I, I come across stories like this and i think to myself wow reddit truly is an amazing place it amazes me every single day how stupid people really can be in this crazy world anyway op your dad i hope you got all your stuff back and you were compensated in some way for the stuff that she stole i mean she ripped your tv off the wall that's going to cost a little bit of money to fix moving on to our last story now in title grandma gets mad at me for telling her grandson he does not have to participate in class if he doesn't want to hi reddit this incident happened a few years ago when i was volunteering part-time as a children's martial arts instructor back then i was maybe 20 or so it hit me pretty hard because i always had the kids best interests in mind but i also understood the grandmother's point of view anyway on to the story as i said i used to volunteer for years as a youth martial arts instructor and coach i started when i was maybe 15 or so with supervision but as time wore on and our club fell victim to mismanagement and petty politics i often ended up managing a class of 30 children on my own which was pretty stressful as i had to make sure they were all safe and nobody was doing something they shouldn't at the time i worked with two age groups five to eight years old and nine to 14 years old i've always loved kids and while i've never had any formal training on handling children with disabilities i very much believed in giving everybody a chance so at no point was i averse to trying to include kids with difficulties one day an entire Title grandma walks in with her grandson. It is obvious from the start the child has some issues. He is very small and scrawny for his age, never looks anybody in the eye, and constantly kind of sways back and forth. The entitled grandma explains to me that his mum had a drug addiction and his dad was an alcoholic and walked out on him, so she's raising the boy. She's upfront about his situation and asks if he can try out with us, which I'm fine with. We get the disabled kid a suit. I briefly work with him one on one to get some basic safety rules in, and then we get started. A few weeks in, I realize it's not working. Managing a class of 30 kids on your own is hard, but now I find that 75% of my attention goes to the disabled kid. Not because of his disability, but because of his lack of interest. He constantly goes off and does his own thing, ignoring the exercise I've set up. I have to correct him all the time and tell him not to do certain things. I worry because I don't want to make the other kids suffer in any way from my lack of attention for them. His entitled grandma used to sit and watch the lesson, which parents are allowed and encouraged to do but after i told her off for interfering with my class she's taken to sitting in the cafeteria down the hall out of sight i decide to take the disabled kid aside and ask him if he likes my class he says no i ask him what he would like to do he says he wants to play football so i tell him as gently as possible he doesn't have to do this sport if he doesn't want to i certainly am not forcing him if he'd rather play football he should go and play football because he'll be happier doing something he likes after the lesson the entitled grandma comes to pick the disabled kid up and i briefly speak with her i felt i had tried to be as gentle and correct as possible explaining that the kid told me he didn't like the class and wanted to play football instead but i also had to keep it short because other parents required my attention a few weeks go by and i don't see the disabled kid anymore i figure he is now happily playing football one evening however i run into the entitled grandma at the
the bus stop in front of the hospital where I was studying at the time. I walk up to say hello, but she immediately goes ballistic, yelling at me for excluding her grandchild and discriminating against people with disabilities. I am stunned and try to explain that I never said he wasn't welcome, just that he doesn't seem to be enjoying my class or the sport and that he may be happier playing football, but it's no use. She says that his physiotherapist was so elated he was taking my class because his motor skills had improved dramatically. And now that I won't let him participate anymore, he's doing worse. I try again to explain that I never excluded him and the kid literally told me he'd rather play football, but she just walks off in a huff, gets on the bus and leaves, never to be seen again. Sorry for the lack of karma. To this day, this story bugs me and for the longest time, I thought I was the butthole here. I tried my best to be correct and polite and gentle. I know disabilities in children can be a touchy subject, but I also understand her. The poor boy had probably faced a lot of discrimination and exclusion before they came to me and she was likely at her wits end. Oh, you know what? No way. I'm not having that for a second OP. I think you did absolutely everything you could to try and give this kid what he wanted, right? Like, it's just not your fault that this grandma demands her grandchild do martial arts instead of football, even though that's not what the kid wants to do. And yeah, maybe it could have been better for his motor system, but come on, if you're not doing something you enjoy, then what's the point? I also don't understand why this entitled grandma just wouldn't let him play football instead of martial arts. Surely playing football, you know, running, sprinting around, touching a ball, you know, controlling your body as much as you can is just as good for your motor skills as martial arts is. Maybe I'm wrong here, but it seems that way, no? Anyway, for the kid, I hope he can do what he wants someday and do things that he actually enjoys rather than being forced around by this entitled grandma. Entitled mother lets her kid steal my blind cane. So a bit of backstory. I'm a 28-year-old woman who just recently went fully blind. When I was a teenager, I volunteered with my local youth group to help rebuild Mississippi after Hurricane Katrina. And while down there, I picked up a fungal parasite called histoplasmosis that over a decade migrated to my eyes and slowly caused blindness. I've been totally blind for about a year now, so I'm pretty new to it, but I digress. When I first went blind, I barely left the house and was afraid to go out in public. I felt like everyone was staring at me and in all honesty, I barely knew what I was doing. The transition had been difficult and I didn't have any support group to teach me. One day, my husband asked if I can take an Uber down to the bank and deposit a rent check and I reluctantly agree. While out, he messages again and reminds me that we're out a few crucial groceries. There was a Walmart grocery literally across the street from the bank, so I figure everything in life is an experience and I'll have to learn how to shop alone eventually, so why not? Everything was fine at first and I was only grabbing a few things, so I didn't need a cart. I was using my cane and what little echolocation skills I had at the time to get around, but was still bumping into things as we blind tend to do sometimes. My cane suddenly hit something a bit softer and I figure maybe I'd whack someone's leg and apologize. Cue entitled kid and entitled mother. Shoot, I'm sorry. Hey, you just hit my son. I'm so sorry, mom. I didn't see him there. The entitled mom then begins yelling. How could you not see him? He's clearly right there. Now, I'm fully blind, but I don't wear sunglasses. Mostly because I can't afford a good UV blocking pair, but also I'm not ever looking for pity or to play the part of a generic blind person. I just want to be treated like a normal person, but I do understand her confusion as blindness is a spectrum, so I try to calmly explain. Mom, I'm blind. I can't see anything, let alone your son. That's why I have to use the cane so I can get around with that. If you're blind, why aren't you wearing big sunglasses? Now, as a blind person, I get a lot of stupid questions, but I understand a lot of them are just people who don't know better, so I try to happily answer as many as I can. Those are really expensive, around $200 for a good pair, and I really don't need any inside. You're not blind, you're faking it! Well, there's the title of this video, guys. Here is where my blood starts to boil. I can't think of any reason someone would want to pretend to be blind. It's an actual hell, and nothing annoys me more when someone calls me a liar when I'm actually not. Just as I'm about to respond, I feel a tug, and before before I blink, I realize this little demon spawn has snatched my $100 cane from my hands. For those of you that don't understand, that's like if you're shopping and suddenly the power goes out and you can't see a single light. Without my cane, I can barely move at all without crashing into anything. My voice gets shaky as I begin to panic. Please give that back. I really do need it. 
No, you don't, you liar. My son deserves to play with this more than you. I hear her shuffle away and my expensive cane cracking into meta displays and such as they leave. I start crying and waving my arms in front of me to grab onto something, anything, and end up crashing and falling into a center aisle display, making a loud scene. Without fail, I somewhat curl into a ball and cry. I'm alone in public, in the dark, and I had no idea what to do. Suddenly, I felt a hand on my shoulder and a man's voice. We'll call him AG for awesome guy. Now, he asked if I'm okay and to stay right there. I do, but begin to at least sit up and listen. This man must have been tall and built like a tank because his footsteps sounded like a giant and I felt a suction of wind when he took off. Maybe about 30 or 40 feet away, I hear this loud bellowing like an angry lion and a loud crash. Then before I know it, the man is back and helping me to my feet. He takes my hand and puts my cane into my palm and helps me pick up the items I dropped when I fell into the display. So I, wiping tears from my cheeks, say, thank you, thank you so much. I didn't know how to handle that. Don't worry about it. Some people are just monsters. This guy restored my faith in humanity and even helped me finish shopping and helped me out of the store. As we're leaving, I can hear the familiar screeching of the entitled mum. something about the awesome guy grabbing the cane and pulling hard, flinging her little devil child into a shopping cart. I don't know if she was exaggerating or not but it would explain the crash i heard it's easy to feel alone in a world without sight but even through the sheer terror of being stripped of my cane at least i know that there are people willing to stand up for me when i need it oh wow this is an amazing story and i guess it just shows that although there are monsters entitled people out in this world there are also heroes like this awesome guy to help you out i just can't even understand how difficult it must be to be blind let alone have someone strip you of your cane in public and just leave you to deal with that i guess perhaps to people like this the cane just seems like a toy and also that that comment about not wearing sunglasses means you must be faking that is so ludicrous i'm just happy that this awesome guy did help you out in the end uh if he wasn't there i don't know what you would have done you would have been in in a lot of trouble um yeah thank god he was there now just quickly op did leave this little comment here at the end for those of you that may be wondering how they typed all this out without being able to see because of the sheer overwhelming amount of people asking if you're blind how are you typing i'll first answer with my fingers and secondly i'm using a screen reader called narrator that reads the screen wherever my cursor or finger is over the screen it reads when i type a letter it reads guys just like google it or something yeah i guess that that shows that little comment at the end those of us that can see how little we know about blindness i did read down there are a lot of comments saying how did you type this then if you can't see i guess we just need to educate ourselves more moving on to our next story now entitled mum tries to steal my sweets for her entitled kid then try to claim i wanted to poison him hello all hope you are doing well during these unknown and uncertain times i hope you're all finding the best out of the current situation so here's my story of what happened to me a few months ago this was before everything sparked up and went into pandemonium i love wrestling and whenever there is a wrestling event on i'll try buy something for the night like sweets because wrestling events are on really late in the place i live england yes they are like right in the ams so i walked down to my local wilco which is a shop on a monday Uh, oh <laughs> they just explain of course they do a british shop which sells all types of things ranging from calculators to wallpapers but most importantly for me sweets try saying that three times quickly wow my favorite type of sweets are called pick and mix you get a cup and fill it up with different types of sweets in different pots you can pick which sweets you want basically quite cool and i'm sure most british people on this subreddit will know what i'm talking about so i picked up my cup and left the store and waited at the traffic lights to walk home it's not a long distance so walking is best for me but as i'm at the lights waiting for them to turn for me to walk i see an entitled mother and her son next to me and this is what i hear mommy could i have some sweeties he says this while looking at my cup okay sweetie mommy will just talk to the boy real quick she then turned to me could my child have one of your sweets no your child should never take candy from a stranger no matter what what if he has allergies to the sweets i'm sure he won't so just hand it over why should i i spent money on this and i don't want to be liable if your child has a reaction to it for all you know i could have poisoned them by this point the lights have already passed and gone back to red i should have left looking back on it now while the light was green the entitled mum then proceeded to try to take the cup out of my hands i prevented her and pulled back 
making the entitled mum stumble backwards and almost fall to the floor. I'm not small by any means, but not big either, so I was actually quite shocked about it. She then tried for a second time, and yet again, I prevented her. But this time, she actually fell back to the floor while her son looked on in disbelief. What happened next was kind of a blur, but I would try to recount it in the best way possible. What I heard next was the entitled mum scream. This pervert is trying to molest my child and poison him. Somebody call the police. I looked at her shocked and her child started screaming alongside her. By this point, there was quite a scene being made and people almost felt like they closed in on me. This is where it became a blur. I think it was a man who asked me, Sir, is this true? No, obviously not. She tries to steal my sweets for her child. He's lying he said he might have poisoned the sweets and said he wanted to molest him i then saw the man pull out his phone to call 999 but just then everything became clear there was a man in a bandana who i will call my guy for this story my guy says mom i was on the other side of the street and i saw the whole thing the kid was just using self-defense because you tried to rob him of the sweets he didn't want to do anything to you or your child the entitled mom then turned to the guy on the phone that's not true tell the police my side of the story The guy said on the phone to the police, Hello, I want to report an incident down in my town. The entitled mum gives me a poop-eating grin and I was horrified. But just then, the guy continued still on the phone, Yes, this mother just tried to rob this child of some sweets that he brought. The entitled mum went white. She ran away with her child, who through all of this was still throwing a tantrum. The guy on the phone then turned back to me with a huge grin on his face. He then showed me his phone. It was never on and it turns out he never actually called the police and just pretended to this made the mother run away and leave me be god dang that guy was a good actor i thank both of them my guy especially and i then walked home with a sense of victory and let me tell you that those pick and mixes tasted 10 times sweeter that day oh this was great i can't believe that she acted that way over literally just candy if you want some so much just go and buy some they're not really that expensive you know halfway through this story i was just thinking to myself you know you could have just given the child a sweet or two to make them go away but then seeing how the story progressed and hearing them say yeah you try to poison and molest my child uh yeah it's probably a good thing you didn't actually give them anything finally good job to the people that helped you out they did a good job without them uh yeah you might have been in a lot of trouble just like the first story i do like how throughout all these stories it seems to be a common thing that we do see a lot of negative people but also heroes that help other people out anyway guys that is gonna do it for the third part in the entitled parents the movie franchise as i am now calling it i really hope you did enjoy it if you did and you haven't yet seen part one or part Part two well that's another about three hours of your time you've got there um they're on screen right now if you haven't checked them out already also don't forget leave your comments down below if you did catch the surprise part of the video if not well you're gonna have to re-watch the video and try and find it lastly i just want to say if you are not already please subscribe to my channel with notifications on it means a lot and we are now getting very close to half a million subscribers so if you do that would be awesome overall guys a massive shout out to you for watching all the way through anyway i will see you tomorrow with a normal video back on my channel.